So continuing with the topic of cargo work on ships, uh, today I'll just make a short video on how to load a container on a bulk carrier. So uh, often sometimes uh, uh, this question is asked to the seafarers appearing for oral examination. So I thought I'll make a short video with some essential notes that you can use for written or oral examination. So before you load a container on a bulk carrier, make sure that you consult the ship's cargo lashing manual for lashing non-standardized cargo all right because uh, standardized cargo would have been bulk cargo on a bulk carrier but because you are now loading a container on a bulk carrier that becomes a non-standardized cargo so you have to consult the ship's cargo lashing manual also make sure if adequate lashing material is not on board then you must provide a requisition for it immediately you must uh, apply for the lashing material to be supplied on board before you load the container also check the load density of the deck and the hatch cover on which the container will be loaded. In case of hatch cover loading, make sure additional wedges have to be welded to support the container uh, in terms of placing the container on the deck as well as lashing the container. Take athwart ship and forward enough lashing to prevent tipping and skidding of containers. Increase the friction by using timber below the container if required while loading on deck can also use timber chocks so that is to distribute the load of the container on the hatch cover uh, and not make it concentrated on a single point on the hatch cover otherwise it may get damaged or bent uh, then make sure that you use the principles from the code of safe practice for cargo storage and securing uh, some of the points from there will be that you have to store the container in forward and aft direction which is normally how they load it on the container ships as well make sure that you do not overstress the deck on hatch covers because each deck or the hatch cover will have its load density and you cannot exceed the load density if you exceed the load density then uh, there could be liabilities in the future if the container falls overboard or if there is damage to the container or the hatch cover uh, so make sure that you check for the load density and only then you uh, load the container or try to distribute the load of the container by using what I said before it was dunnaging or chocks. Uh, when you are not using these stacking devices make sure that the container is stored on timber which transfers load evenly on the storage area just like I mentioned before. To For the lashing of the container or for securing the container rather make sure that you use locking cones, twist locks etc. Now these ones are of course provided very commonly on the container ships where containers are loaded but uh, if your bulk carrier is designed to load containers on deck then uh, these devices should be provided if not then you make sure that you order for these devices to lock the container or secure the container on the deck uh, hatch covers on which containers are carried should be adequately secured as well uh, timber shoring should not exceed two meters so they should be placed at intervals of every two meters uh, wire clips at least four should be used to be properly greased and applied with the U part of the clips over the dead end of the rope and make sure that you keep the lashings under equal tension. Uh, method one of loading containers on bulk carriers was for medium weight containers where the weight of the top container will not be more than 70% of the bottom container. So as you can see here, this is how the lashing will be carried out. It is normally carried out from the second tier container and lashed across. And you can see here that the weight of the top container is not more than 70% of the bottom container. In method 2, we have the medium weight containers again, where the weight of the top container may be more than 70% of the bottom container. So you can see here how the container is then lashed. Finally, in method 3 is for heavyweight containers where the weight of the top container may be more than 70% of the bottom container. It should be bottom container, I have written top container again. Alright, so again here you can see how the lashing has been carried out. So here you can see double lashing is carried out not only from the second tier container but also from the first tier container. Alright, so this is pretty much uh, the answer that you will be expected to give if you are asked how a bulk carrier can load a container as a non-standardized cargo. Uh, let me know um, what you thought about this video and if I missed anything, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks guys and bye.